Hello friends, uh, th this is Dr. Sagar Bhargav, uh, Cataract Glaucoma and Refractive Surgeon. So in this video, we will have complete information on one of the newest refractive procedures called as Relax Mile. Now this procedure has been being done throughout our country for last almost 4-5 to five years and recently it has now been available in Calcutta, for the first uh, smile center in the whole of East India. So what is smile? Smile is small incision lenticular extraction. Before we get into specifics for smile, let's understand what were the options available before smile came in. In other words, let's understand the deficiencies which the existing refractive procedures had which led to development of smile. So the oldest refractive procedure which is still being done is called as PRK which got its FD approval way back in 1996 and uh, it is used to correct low myopic errors up to minus 6 diopters. The disadvantage of PRK was mainly that it caused uh, discomfort, pain, watering, irritation for al almost up to 3 days of procedure and the visual recovery would take close to 4 weeks for the patient to be very comfortable. Very rarely in patients who have had PRK developed uh, what is called as hazes in the cornea or PRK haze in about three to four months after the procedure. Next we have LASIK and femtolasic which uh, were introduced after PRK and they are still the most commonly done refractive procedure throughout the world. Now these procedures score above PRK for the simple fact that from the next day itself patient is absolutely painless vision improvement is very good in fact it's almost near normal vision from day to itself the disadvantage of LASIK and femtolasic were that about 1% of patients did have intraoperative problems so one of the uh, complications which was seen with LASIK was called as a free cap now as we are aware that in LASIK there is a creation of flap and this flap created is attached in part to the cornea the part of attachment is called as hinge if for some reason this flap gets detached from the cornea this is called as a free cap and uh, in certain situations when the free cap is created the procedure may have to be abandoned another complication that can happen is an incomplete flap so when the flap is being created the hinge lies on one side of the cornea Again, for some reason, if the hinge, if the flap dissection stops somewhere in the middle, so that the hinge, instead of going to the side, bisects the cornea or the center of the cornea, that flap is called as an incomplete flap. And in the, that scenario, again, the procedure has to be cancelled. In femtolasic, you have a better control over flap creation. But it comes with its own sets of uh, issues. One of the problems with femtolasic is formation of opaque bubble layer. Now these are dense bubbles which form in the in the plane where the dissection is going to happen. Now if the opaque bubble layer forms, the problem that can happen is uh, the pupil tracking which is a very important part while uh, the laser delivery gets hampered. And again we will have to wait for this opaque bubble layer to settled on so that the pupil tracking resumes and then the laser can be given. Another rare complication that can happen is as the laser is being delivered if the laser causes formation of micro bubbles in the dissection plane sometimes this micro bubbles rupture to the flap and this is called as a vertical gas breakthrough. This leads to buttonal formation and depending on the location of this buttonal formation a call might have to be taken regarding abandonment of the procedure. Very rarely in femtolasic the dissection of the flap itself may pose a challenge because of strong flap stroma or flap bed adhesions. LASIK procedure have, uh, have risk for development of dry eye and this basically happens because of the, the, the length of the incision that is being created. This incision leads to cutting of the corneal nerves which eventually gives rise to dry eye. 
though this is a temporary phenomenon, the dry eye can last up to six months for which patient would need lubricating drops for that period. Considering all these, a, a quest was on to, to discover a, a new procedure which will be minimally, which would be minimally invasive and would take care of all the drawbacks which, which we just discussed. This led to a discovery of a new refractive procedure called a SMILE which had been on trial since late 2000 and uh, it got its FDA approval in 2016 where FDA approved it for correction up to minus 8 diapter myopia and in 2018 they further modified the approval to include astigmatism of up to minus 3 which could be corrected to SMILE. Now let's see what exactly happens in SMILE. First we see an animation. As we can see from the animation that the laser is being applied at two levels in the cornea to essentially carve out a tissue or which is called as lenticule and once this is carved out a, a superficial two to four millimeter incision is taken and from that incision this tissue is is actually extracted the thickness of the tissue would depend on the degree of correction that one uh, is uh, aspiring to correct higher the correction required the thicker is the tissue thus once the tissue is out the surgery is over and what we see is a flapless procedure now let's see this in a real video now as we can see that as the suction is applied the cornea is aplanated by a lens and uh, the cornea is flattened and once everything is set the laser is laser is started and uh, the laser first uh, dissects the deeper layer uh, uh, of the lenticule then it sep then it dissects the superficial layer and finally it creates a 4 mm incision now after this uh, a separator is used to essentially dissect these two layers which were created by the laser and uh, once the, the layers are separated the tissue is then brought out from this 4 mm incision and as the tissue is brought out the procedure gets over and, uh, the, and uh, then we move on to the other eye now smile is becoming very popular amongst all the refractive surgeons as it offers many advantages first is as there is no flap creation so all the flap related problems that we have seen in the LASIK are no longer there to be dealt with Secondly, the size of the incision is just 4 millimeters compared to a much bigger sized uh, uh, incision on the uh, for LASIK close to 20 millimeters. So this would mean that there is less uh, uh, cutting of the corneal nerves which eventually means that there will be less possibility of dry eye. Another advantage of smaller incision is that it leads to a very fast uh, recovery of patients so they are almost back to their normal routines in three days time another advantage is that since there is no flap any in inadvertent injury to the eye would have no implication on a smile operated patient as uh, there is no flap so there is no question of any flap related problems because of injury also some other advantages with smile are that protective glasses are actually not needed beyond three days Outdoor sports can be resumed in a week's time. Water contact can be started in a in a week. When we compare Smile with other flap less procedures called as PRK, Smile has an advantage as the patients have much faster rec visual recovery compared to PRK. This has been confirmed by a study on U.S. defense uh, personnel where 87.9 percent of the Smile patients had 2020 vision or better at one month compared to 73.8 percent patients who underwent PRK now there are obviously some disadvantage of smile also which we should understand and know about one of the main concerns of surgery is loss of suction in smile while the laser is being delivered patients have to remain absolutely still stable otherwise the suction will get lost and the procedure will get halted if the suction loss happens in the early stage, we will have to convert it to a femtolasic or a PRK. If the suction loss happens towards the later part of the procedure, 
we can always redock and complete the procedure very rarely the procedure will have to be abandoned very rarely you can have lenticular problems as we had seen in the earlier part of the video that how smoothly the lenticule gets dissected and it, it comes out very easily now very rarely you can have issues where the dissection is difficult and uh, when we are trying to get the lenticule out there can be what is called as lenticular tear or retained lenticular part and this can lead to an unpredictable refraction one more disadvantage of LASIK is it's not yet approved for uh, hyperopic treatments and also if there is a residual power retreatment with a uh, smile is not possible so you have to basically do a, a, a PRK or a femtolasic in order to treat any residual power another disadvantage when I compare this with LASIK is that majority of LASIK patients will show visual improvement the next day smile patients also tend to show improvement by next day but some patients may take up to one week to improve and very rarely up to two weeks for the vision to completely stabilize however the advantages of uh, smile far outweigh the, the disadvantages and as a result smile is now is seeing a massive growth at the world level almost 3.5 million procedures have been done till date in 70 countries with almost 2000 surgeons now uh, doing smile smile procedure is being done on Zeiss platform and now other companies are also coming with this with the similar technology Zymer and uh, Schwind has already got a CE approval which is a European equivalent of FDA for their machines using the same technology Alcon and JNJ are also working on the same for their machines so we can safely conclude mine is a minimally invasive procedure which allows patients to resume their activities very fast and uh, this procedure will definitely dominate in the days to come as more and more companies are adopting to this technology and bringing in their smile variants thank you very much and in case you have any queries doubts you can always uh, ask me either through youtube uh, questions or on my whatsapp thank you